Jesus was sent from heaven for us. We can have eternal life through him. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 3, 14-17 Despite sin, God chooses to save us. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3.21-24 Though we are sinners of many kinds, we can all be justified through Jesus. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11 through 11. Through Jesus we are forgiven and redeemed from our sins we can also know the plan God has for us, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath bounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Ephesians 1, 7-10 Jesus is the bridge to God the Father. Also, Jesus allows us to come with him. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. John 14, 3 through 7. We show our faith in Jesus by proclaiming him as Lord. We trust in his death and resurrection as payment for our sins. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Deuteronomy 30.14 That is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 8 through 10. By yielding to Jesus as Lord of our life, we are added to God's victory. We receive the gift of justification, peace with God, and His grace. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have 
access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope the glory of God. Romans 5, 1 through 2. If you deeply, honestly believe that Jesus is Lord and would like to allow him to rescue you from your sin, here are instructions. Follow Romans 10, 9 and confess Jesus as Lord. That means putting and keeping Jesus first in your life. Next, trust in his death and resurrection as payment for your sins, as mentioned in Ephesians 1, 7. If you truly accepted Jesus as Lord of your life, congratulations! You are now forgiven in a child of God. The first step of obedience for all children of God is to be baptized. Baptism represents death, burial, and resurrection. It is a sign of pure trust. I recommend asking a pastor at a local church. A couple of passages on the topic are Acts 10, 44-48 and Romans 6, 1-7.